Hey, welcome back folks. Thank you for joining me on another video today showing you what uh, some settings look like for Modern Warfare Season 2. Uh, what I've got set up, what really works for me. Uh, like with any video, a lot of these settings are up to player interpretation and what your particular style and play style is like. I'm just showing you what really works best for me, especially in Warzone. Um, I haven't played a whole lot of uh, zombies lately. Um, just because I'm waiting for a better fix on the tombstone glitch. Yes, I am one of those guys. Um, but I figured I'd go ahead and show you what works best for me with regards to uh, the the controller setups, the graphics, and the audio setups when it comes to uh, Modern Warfare, uh, Warzone, whether it's Resurgence or, or what have you. So we can go ahead and jump right on into this. What I have for you right now is looking on the controller settings. Again, I am playing on console, Xbox Series X. Uh, we will go into aiming input device, obviously, is controller. I don't really mess with too much of this out here as I've never really had a need to, but a lot of the feel that we've had for the controllers coming back to the original way of Warzone 1, um, I think it's, it's fantastic. It really works out well for me. Dead zone inputs. Um, I've got a little bit of uh, drift, uh, stick drift on this, but you can see what my... Um, uh, dead zones are for the left stick. I have four as a minimum and then 85 as a max, meaning that no, I only have to push it 85% of the way in order to get the maximum effort that I would pushing it all the way. So that way I'm constantly uh, uh, in a manner of, uh, I can sprint faster because I'm not having to push my uh, thumb a lot further. So I'm getting to that sprint a lot faster, I should say. Then what we have is a right stick. I have a minimum of four. I have a little bit of stick drift in my right stick. Um, I just like to play with it uh, with as far as the, that was bad. I like to have my right stick min set just because that way I'm not like constantly rotating as I'm moving and trying to reload if I've got something else going on. I'm just trying to keep uh, sights down on the uh, the individuals that I'm trying to get after. So hopefully that works. Feel free to pause the video and see what works out best for you. For aiming, um, horizontal stick sensitivity, as always, like I was playing with uh, the season one and even before that, I've got uh, the horizontal sen stick sensitivity set to eight, vertical stick sensitivity set to eight with an ADS multiplier of nine, meaning uh, it's 90% uh, movement of the uh, ADS speed when I'm moving up and down uh, with the, the actual thumbsticks on that. So uh, it's not moving like super fast and it's not bouncing everywhere. So I have a little bit better control over what I'm seeing. Uh, sensitivity multiplier, you can have what you want up there. I personally don't like to use a lot of this just because it's, it, it doesn't really matter to me. I don't notice a whole lot of difference when I'm playing. Um, what I've got for tactical sprint multiplier or stance sensitivity rather is uh, one, no issues with that. It's uh, moving the same speed as I would if I weren't in tax stance. Research, I'm sorry, aim response curve type. It's been a long week. I'm sure you can relate. But the uh, response curve type I've kept on dynamic. Um, it really helps for more. Of, the more I play, the more uh, experience I get with this, the more use. I see for uh, the experienced player side of it, it really helps uh, fast starting movement and slows down the aiming rate uh, when when it's needed, uh, when you're getting close to the 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 target that you're trying to hit. Um, multipliers, one, I didn't really change anything with that. I didn't see a need to. Transition timing, uh, ADS transition timing. I've got it set to instant, uh, meaning that the sensitivity multiplier is, is applied immediately upon uh, hitting ADS, regardless of whether um, I'm looking fully down the sights or, or the scope, or if I'm just transitioning to do so. Custom sensitivity presume, I have off. Aim assist is on, as always. Controller, it saves your butt. Aim assist, uh, black ops. Um, again, um, traditional aim slow down near the target that way it keeps the lock on the target a little bit better um, this for some reason i've noticed a little bit of a difference an improvement in this than i did in uh season one i'm not sure if they've if it's just me or what but uh tr going back and forth between black ops and default uh, black ops seems to be a little bit uh, better than default was initially if that makes any sense the original starting setup anyway uh, third person ADS correction assist, I kind of leave that alone. Moving over to gameplay, what I have is 
uh, automatic tactical sprint. So the minute that I hit the stick, I am moving and uh, keep going as much as I possibly can. Uh, slide maintain sprint. Um, I have it set to off again uh, because I, uh, when I push the stick forward, I automatically tack sprint anyway. Um, and it, uh, it just, I sometimes I like to slow down when I'm coming out of a sprint to take a look around a corner because that's usually what I'm doing the tactical sprint, slide into a corner, come around, and I want to go a little bit slower so I'm not like zooming past a potential target. Again, all of these settings are personal uh, to the player itself. So mix and match and let me know what you guys think down in the comments below to see really kind of what works out for you. Uh, technical sprint behavior. I have it single tap run. doesn't really matter since it's always on. Uh, ground mantle I have on. Uh, automatic airborne and ground mantle uh, automatic I have turned off um, just because it's easier uh, when I'm trying to go over low uh, obstacles, it just makes it easier for me to clear those and keep moving in a straight path rather than having to like go around them. Uh, tap to slide. Again, this is from season one. If you tap to slide, it just means that you're going to, instead of having to hold it down, you're not going to, um, it, it only goes, um, it, it reset. So I'm going to change this to uh, slide only at some point. Um, that way when, instead of holding it, I won't have to worry about jumping and, you know, uh, uh, flopping down on the ground, dolphin diving, that kind of thing. And that really kind of affects plunging underwater because it's the same button or the same mechanism used to do that. So I have it as free. So when you point your camera down towards the riverbed, you're just going to go down automatic, uh, parachute behavior. I have turned off. I'm a big boy. I can do that on my own. I don't need a computer to tell me when to pull the chute. Door bash is on, uh, ledge climb behavior is mantle only and uh that's only when i like jump up to mantle over something versus me just moving toward it and uh climbing that ledge aim down sights nothing really changed here all this stuff is pretty much um the way i've kept it i've kept it at a default because i haven't really noticed a difference in playing it anyway else let's see Armor plate behavior, again, apply all. The minute you hold that button down, it'll apply all your armor at once, and you should be good to go. Keep the stick off. Backpack control is on the D-pad. Again, controller. And then go down to graphics. I didn't really change a whole lot on here. Um, On-demand texture streaming. You can leave it on. I put the film grain down all the way to uh, zero so it's easier to see things. So yeah, you lose a little bit of the realism, but I still think it looks a lot better. Motion blur, I've got turned off. And then world motion blur, I've got turned off as well. Uh, FOV is really important, especially if you're wanting to see more of your environment. Now, if you go all the way out to say 120, if the system doesn't crash or if something doesn't happen where it causes your uh, you to lose uh, 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 aim assist, um, then it just makes the enemies look smaller and kind of harder to hit. I have left uh, first-person camera movement set as low as I possibly could to 50. Uh, that way uh, the camera doesn't shake uh, in first-person um, as much on, on many of the camera angles and many of the camera perspectives. Moving on to display, nothing really I can change there. Uh, but hopefully again, if you need to go back and pause the video, a lot of this just helps me keep visual tracking of the enemies when I'm, uh, trying to, to take them out. Audio, um, this is where I've seen the most change. Um, I've, I've kept this on headphone bass boost. I've got master volume control at 74. When you come down here, I've got gameplay music volume set really, really low. It's nice to have a little bit of something in the background, but really it's just to kind of keep me from getting bored with it. Um, dialogue volume up to 66, the effects volume up to 76. Uh, I've had to dial up the master volume because things were a little too quiet for me, um, especially with these headphones. Maybe I just need new headphones. Uh, then I've got voice chat. Uh, it's set at 72 so I can hear uh, whoever's chatting with me and obviously voice chat is on uh, and then proximity chat unless I use uh, discord to go ahead and talk with teammates that I'm playing with in that then uh, voice output device speakers that way I can go through my capture card and connect to the OBS and that way I can go ahead and uh, keep those settings uh, where I need to to make sure that the sound actually gets through so you guys can hear it on your end
Okay. Microphone level I have set to 80. That way I'm not like screaming at you guys and you're not hearing like clipping happening at the higher levels. Um, open mic sensitivity is set to 70, just meaning that this particular mic, the way it is, it doesn't take uh, a whole lot to get it started. So I'm trying to uh, dial back when it actually does it. So if I cough or, or sneeze or something, it may not necessarily pick it up. But anyway, I really hope those settings help you guys. Oh, uh, one last thing on the controller that I forgot to mention. Um, what I did end up doing was taking off the vibration aspect of it. I can't remember where it's at. But um, when I go into uh, the vibration aspect of it, um, I tried, I, I'm playing around with leaving the vibration off. I know it's going to feel weird initially, but uh, I'm just going to give it a shot to see if it helps with my gameplay and me staying on target a little bit easier. Um, and uh, we'll see how that kind of plays out. But really do appreciate you guys joining me today. Thank you so much. If these tips and tricks uh, helped you, please leave a like down in the comment section below. Um, and then uh, let me know what you guys think of the videos and uh, if any of this stuff helps you. And let me know what your particular settings are and if uh, there's something you'd like to see me try on this. But uh, until next time, take care of yourselves, each other, and peace.